Happy Tuesday, Shredderland. Welcome to Shred Your Body, episode number 11. I am your host, Jesse James Jemnick. We come live every single Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, and our mission is to spread ER is to spread ER shred literally across the world. And it's, you know, it's come in, you know, it's something we started in October. We're now rolling into 2021 and the results just keep pouring in. The quality of people keep showing up. The community, the the vibe, everything is just getting bigger. And it is just, it's a really, really exciting time. And my goal with Shred Your Body, which will eventually turn into a podcast, is to just keep interviewing the most amazing epic people that are now part of what I call the shredder army, the people that have that have said yes, they've raised their hand, they said enough is enough, I'm taking back control of life. And my goal is to share their stories because let me tell you something, I have met more amazing people in the last six months of life than I have in the last few years. And it's it's the fa- it's my favorite part of the ER shred is our community. So tonight I have a really really special guest. Um, welcome, Mr. Jason Young, to the Shred Your Body call. What's up, brother? Hey, Jesse. How's it going? I'm good, man. I'm good. Jason, we were chatting before we got on, and Jason is stocked and loaded in his truck studio. In his truck <laughs> studio, uh, that's what he's got. That's what he's working with right now. But you know, Jason and I, um, you know, we've got to know each other only really through the ER shred. We've actually partnered with the same nutrition company. Um, I've been with them now for six years. Jason, you've been with them for a long, long time. You know, on and off, all the way back to 2012 or before that. Six. Oh, okay. 2006. Okay. So yeah. like you, you, you know, like you've, you've been through it. Um, but the cool thing is, you know, I obviously got to know you through you doing uh, the ER shred. Um, you have stuck with us now for multiple shreds. You're becoming an, a, a very, very welcomed uh, piece of the team. You know, I love watching you. Your videos are amazing. The value that you're giving to people is amazing. Your attitude is freaking amazing. Um, and that's the now. But what I'm excited about, Jason, is I want to dive into the past a little bit um, because I believe that we are who we are today because of our past. And you and I growing up, we kind of had a similar past. Um, You know, Jason today is, you know, if you haven't read his bio, he's a 46 year old entrepreneur in the in the in the tech industry world. Um, He's married. He's been married for 23 years. He has two beautiful children. Um, But growing up was definitely not easy for this guy. He grew up the kid who was overweight, the kid who was always made fun of. And we'll get into that story Um, that messes with your brain. And as I shared with Jason, that was pretty much me growing up. Um, And that led Jason down a deep, deep hole that we'll dive into and we'll try to figure out how he came out of that. And ultimately, um, he had an amazing health transformation and been struggling back and forth ever since. And then, boom, here we are with the ER shred. So that's quite a bit to go over, brother. And I say we just dive in. You ready? I'm ready. We got so many people coming in saying hi. I don't know if you can see the comments on your phone, but people saying, Jason, you're looking healthy. Tell us the why. So here we go. Here we go. So growing up, growing up, yeah. talk to me. Yeah. First of all, where are you from originally? So first, I just want to I want to give a little gratitude for you, Jesse. I, I, I wish we had an audience in front of us right now. I've emceed some events with large audience. And I, I would ask for a round of applause for you right now, brother, because oh, uh, you give so selflessly to this community. And I, I know what it takes to get to where you are especially coming from where we came from. And uh, so I just want to thank you from deep down uh, for yeah. what you do. So mm. thanks, um, man. So, I, yeah, I yeah. That. I received that. It's yeah, something good. that I'm working on because it's hard for me. Um, but I'm going to take that and I appreciate you. I just want you to know. Yeah, that, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, we all appreciate you. So thank you. Uh, so as you said, I'm 46 years old. I was born and raised in Salem, Oregon, the beautiful Pacific Northwest, mm. which is uh, very, very cold and covered in snow right now. First snow day today. Um, but uh, I, I was raised from age six. My dad was 
an entrepreneur. So I was raised by an entrepreneur. I'm second generation. I've worked for a few people off and on uh, over the years, a couple, couple times here and there. But, um, but uh, my health journey or my, my difficulty with health really started um, in puberty. Uh, you know, I, that the company, the business that my dad owned took us on the road. We traveled, um, mostly we followed a carnival out of Portland. We were like carnies, you know, gypsies, but my dad would rent a space and, uh, sell his wares. And we, we went to fairs and festivals and car shows, rod runs, air shows. I got used to watching 150,000 people walk in front of our booth, uh, just about every day in some cases, uh, during the summer. And, um, uh, but I also became really good friends with the carnival owner's son, which, uh, man, I got to ride all the rides for free. Mm. Um, I, it was, it was a party all summer long, but I also got free access to corn dogs and cotton candy and caramel apples and, uh, and soda. And when I was young, you know, from age six to, to about 12, 13 years old, uh, that was okay. I was running all the time. I had a high metabolism. Everything seemed to be going right. And then the summer between, I think, sixth and seventh grade, uh, puberty, puberty started to hit and mm. my metabolism went. <clears throat> and um, I didn't know at the time that I had something else going on uh, in my head. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, but, we'll get to that. Um, we'll get to that but, part for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but it, it, uh, I blew up like that summer. I got really big. I went back to middle school, um, and the kids were cruel. You know, they bullied yeah. me and, uh, picked on me, knocked books, books out of my hand and, um, called me all kinds of awful names. And, uh, and that, you know, that hit really hard to my, my psyche and, and, um, uh, just, uh, my self, self esteem and self belief. Yeah. Um, so this is this is this is sixth grade now we're talking about. Yeah, seventh seventh grade is really when it, grade. when I yeah first first of middle school seventh grade yep. So so yep. growing up so growing up childhood it was traveling around obviously the carnivals the fairs like really all you ever learned was just let loose and you kind of just ate whatever it was never really yeah. like this is bad this is not bad there was never like a healthy thing like it was just like no. No, because the problem was I wasn't supposed to be eating that stuff, right? And so I'd get back to the motorhome, and my mom had cooked uh, chicken and rice and broccoli, and, you know, she made dinner. And if I told her that I had been chowing on corn dogs and garbage all day and drinking sodas, uh, she wouldn't have been real happy. So I ate that meal anyway, right? I ate dinner so like mom, I was hungry. Your mom, was actually, your mom ate healthy for the most part? Well, I don't know. I don't know if healthy is the right word. We had a lot of microwave popcorn because <laughs> some nights it was pretty late. Okay. Um, but, you know, it was like it was it was greasy chicken and rice and gravy and gravy and gravy, you know. So okay. it, so it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't like steamed rice yeah. and chicken breast, you know. Yeah. But no, um, I, asked, I asked those questions because I think it's important, Jason, and I know, yeah. you know, and I want to thank you because I know you said that you're an open book and I just, yeah. I want to, I want people to understand because one of my hopes is, is number one, I want to share you as a person and your, your amazing story. Cause I'm so freaking proud of you for where you're at right now um, and, and you. what you're doing with life now. But I want people to understand, cause you, as you know, there's so many people that are struggling out there yeah, and it yeah. starts young. And I don't yeah. think people realize that like you could be in your forties and fifties and still be dealing with stuff when you were 10 years old. And, yeah. and I want people to understand that it takes work. And I know you're yeah. going to share some of that too, but yeah, I want yeah. people to kind of follow that along. So you've had this path. Now we get to seventh grade and all of a sudden you, you've experienced something that you haven't experienced before. You blew up. You, you, you became yeah. overweight with all yeah. of this excess food and stuff, right? Puberty hits, hormones change, all that kind of good stuff. And yeah. what was it like in middle school for you? What, I mean, getting made fun of like, man, dude. I try to I try to suppress these feelings that I've had yeah, when I was a yeah. kid. You know what I'm yeah. you know what I mean, right? Like Oh yeah, yeah. I grew yeah. up this I, way. Yep. No, I uh going going back a little bit to what my mom cooked, you know, my I didn't have I didn't have education around 
uh, healthy food. My, you know, I, I was taught that my genes depicted my, my outcome, right? I, I was yeah. told that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, son, you're fat because it runs in our family, right? My, yeah. my, mom, my mom was fat before me, and, and so that's, you're destined to be that way. And so I, I learned early on that, uh, that I had no power over it. That, that I was just the way that I was, no matter what I did, uh, no matter how hard I tried, I was just going to be stuck in this fat kid uh, who got tormented. And, mm. uh, and uh, it, was, it was horrible, you know, and if I wanted to check out a sports, I got, I got a pass because I was yeah. big. And um, yeah, so in, in junior high, you know, I, I was, uh, uh, I got, I got picked on and, and my, you know, my dad was in uh, martial arts. He taught, he taught martial arts. So instead of uh, telling me, instead of teaching me how to, how to overcome these social obstacles because of my weight, uh, he taught me how to fight, right? He taught me how to keep the kids from knocking the books out of my hand and, uh, and how a, a quick, quick spine from a book to the throat would take a kid down real fast. And, and then he'd leave you alone and pick the biggest kid take the biggest kid out and the rest of them will leave you alone. That's what I learned. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't like, just laugh it, just laugh it off. The kids will leave you alone. I, I didn't, uh, I didn't learn that. And, and so, um, so it scarred me, you know, to the point where uh, I, I dropped out my sophomore year, dropped out of high school with a 0.5 GPA, which is an A in math and an F in everything else. Because at the time, that's how I felt F everything else. What is it? What does it mean? What is it? What does it mean it scarred you? Like, can you, how do you describe that? So, so uh, you know, emotional wounds uh, scar much deeper than physical, right? And, and uh, I would go home most nights from school uh, in tears. You know, I'd walk mm. home in tears and, and cry myself to sleep a lot. And, um, and finally, when it got to the point where, I went into the vice principal's office one of many times because I got into another fight defending myself. Uh, and the vice principal of the high school, my sophomore year said, so have you ever considered, I'm telling him these kids are calling me a horrible names. Right. Mm. Um, and, and his, his response to me was, have you ever tried cutting back on the cake and pie and stuff like that? Right. Like it was my problem. Like it was my fault that they were tormenting me. And, and I, I looked at him and I said, you know what? You're just as ignorant as the rest of these kids in the school. I don't want to learn from somebody like you. If you got to know me a little bit, you'd know that it's Doritos and soda, that I'm, that I'm a salty, savory guy. I don't like sweets. I don't like cake. I don't like pie. That doesn't do it mm. for me. So even if, if you'd have gotten to know me for a second, maybe, you know, maybe you'd have figured that out. And so I got up and walked home in tears that day. That was the day I dropped out of high school. And, uh, uh, yeah, my – my dad called the school and tried to come down and beat up the vice principal. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was bad. It was a, it was a rough time for me. And it took, uh, it took a lot of, a lot of years of uh, building, uh, building up self-esteem. Like I, I, I said, I, I've emceed, I've said emceed a room of 300 people. I've stood, stood on a stage with 10,000 people in the room but I'm scared to death of this camera right here because all growing up, uh, if it was time to take pictures, I was hiding in the back row. Mm. You could see my head floating between everybody else. Uh, mm. so that, so the fear of the camera, um, I'm finally at 46 years old, starting to get used to it, you know, mm. starting to be comfortable stepping out, um, and showing myself to the world. Yeah. Yeah. You realize it's a good thing to fit out now, right? Yeah, it is good. Yeah. It feels good. It feels good and to 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 be able to help other people and to do that I've got to, right? I have you, to. You yeah. do. You do. It takes a lot of courage to put yourself out there. Yeah. It does. So especially especially growing up feeling like I mean, I don't know, but I can only speak for me and it, it sounds like you, but I I felt fuck I felt fucking worthless half the time, bro. Like I you know what I mean yeah. like like you, you think you got friends, but you, you like you, you go to them and it's like, ah, oh, hey, fat kid, hey, this, hey, you know what I mean? Like it's, it just, yeah. it just fucking beats on your brain for so much, and it's like, is it even worth living? Like, you know what I mean? Like, do I even like, 
you know, and I grew up like my parents were great. Like we had, you know what I mean? My dad ran a dry cleaning business. Like it was nothing like that, but it's like yeah. the, the pain and, and, and we deal with it that way. Other people deal with it through abuse and they deal with it through trauma and, and whatever that may be. It's the same kind of pain. It's just in a different form, you know, yeah, and, and that pain loads. But I mean, you, you dropped out of high school for this. Yeah. Like it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it changed big, my whole life. Yeah, that's a big deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, so confidence levels obviously shot, right? Yeah. Don't believe in yeah. yourself. No yeah. self esteem. That affects relationship. That affects career. You're now a young adult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you're getting into uh, life, and yet we. Yeah, that's when. That's when I. That's when I turned to partying and drugs and alcohol. And, you know, I started smoking when I was 18 and, and drinking not long after that. And uh, at, at one point, at my lowest point, you know, I was, I was partying and, and finding social acceptance through doing all of the wrong things, right? Uh, making my body worse and um, looking for the next, next hit of dopamine, whether that came from uh, from alcohol, uh, or, or methamphetamines at my lowest, I did pretty much everything but heroin. Right. I, I thought druggies use needles. <laughs> so I'm not going to be that guy. You know, like I can remember one day when I, I was smoking a bunch of weed. I was, I was drunk. Uh, I was high on meth and we decided, Hey, this would be a good time to eat a bunch of psychedelic mushrooms and trip on acid. Right. Like that's where I went. My spiral went all the way to the bottom. Um, and, and I found, uh, I found heavy addiction for, a, for a little while. And, um, uh, so that was a, that was a struggle too, you know, how many years uh, did you get stuck in that? Um, about four years, probably 18 to, to, uh, about 22, I guess 20. Yeah. Yeah. About 22. My wife, my wife, I met my wife, Marcole, who was a good little Mormon girl. You know, she was really, she grew up very sheltered. She didn't drink. She didn't smoke. She didn't do drugs. She didn't party. Uh, how, how I even, how I was even blessed to marry up like that um, is, uh, is just a, it's a God thing to me, but call it, yeah. call it the universe, whatever. But we were, uh, I was actually hanging out with a buddy. My wife was working with this, this girl. Uh, and she called and said, all the women in the office need chocolate, right? So, so we went and brought him a bag of chocolate and, uh, and I stuck my head in the door at, at her work. And there was this gorgeous young thing running the, the front desk, answering phones. And I was smoking at the time and I stuck my head in like a dummy. I said, Hey, does anybody in here have a lighter? Right. Like good line, good pickup line. So she gets up, unhooks her headset and prances like a fairy on the wind in her sundress and bare feet. And she goes into the office and she finds me a lighter from some some guy that worked, worked yeah. there smoked. And uh, anyway, we uh, we fell in love pretty fast. I proposed to her uh, a couple months after we met and we were married in nine months, you know, and so um, but she didn't know the life I was leading. She didn't know the drugs and all that stuff. So I quit everything but cigarettes and alcohol cold Turkey, because I knew if wow. this hot, if this hottie figures out what I'm doing, she's gone, right? She's not going to stick around with a guy like me. I'm already, um, you know, I'm already a heavy guy and, and I already had this horrible image of myself. Um, and, and it was amazing that I made it through the, the first blind date, you know? Um, so, so I dumped all of it, never turned around, never looked back. I, I was a, one of the lucky ones that uh, walked away from meth after a couple of years of using it and, and yeah. didn't uh, um, never look back. But, but the cigarettes hung out for another 18 years till I was 36. I quit smoking 10 years ago and it was two packs of Marlboro Reds a day. Right. Wow. Um, so I ate my emotions. I smoked. Uh, it could be, 
uh, a foot of snow on the ground and I've got the flu and I'm standing out on the front porch because I wouldn't smoke inside. <laughs> that kind of smoker. Um, mm. and, uh, and I drank up until November or just before my surgery last year. Um, oh. I was drinking self-medicating right up, right up through October uh, to get through the day past one o'clock. I was drinking vodka and Red Bull. So I'm a, I'm a new... I'm a newly uh, uh, recovering alcoholic, I guess. Um, wow. So, yeah. So, um, Good for you, Jason. Good for you. Seriously. Yeah, thanks. Seriously. Thanks. Congrats. Thank you. That's a big deal. Yeah. So, big deal. So, uh, yeah. So, I, I got notes here. I just wanted to touch on a few things like um, – Back in 2006, you talked about uh, the shakes. My uh, my parents saw that I was struggling um, back in 06, and so they introduced me to the shakes that we that we use for ER Shred. Yeah. And I would buy them and put them on the shelf and let them go bad. And I and I would tell my parents, uh, this stuff doesn't work. Like the shakes don't work. And of course, my parents aren't dumb. They knew you're you're not drinking the shakes. Like yeah. if you're drinking the shakes, you wouldn't be at that point pushing 270 pounds at five foot six. And, uh, and, uh, and you and were so, doing, you were drinking and smoking and all this yeah, other stuff at, at that too. At that. Yeah. Drink, drinking and smoking and eating Ooh. fast and eating fast food and uh, Red Bulls. Yeah. My, Ooh. most of my adult life. Yeah. So in Ooh. 06, you know, the crazy thing is in 06 at 270 pounds, I crawled under houses and through attics for a living. I, I could at 270 pounds, believe it or not, I could go feet first up through your attic crawl space, grab the rafter, swing my feet and go. People, people had no idea. Like I had this kid working for me, a friend of mine that was skinny as a rail. And they'd always say, oh, is he here to crawl in the little spaces for you? Right. And uh, no. No, he's not. That's me. <laughs> That's me. I'm the guy who's going to be bouncing around your attic, right? And they're just looking at me in disbelief, like, how are you even going to get through that hole, you know? And uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, five years, five years, I'm shelfing the shakes. I'm not drinking them. Yeah. 2011, my first real health crisis hits. I'm getting up in the morning to go to work and I'm rolling out of bed uh, I can't stand up straight. I'm hobbled to the bathroom, right? I'm feeling 80 something. By the time I got to the, to the shower, uh, I could just stand up straight. And, but, but I really couldn't move well until after a hot shower and kind of limber up, right? So here I am uh, at that point. Uh, well, that's 10 years ago. So I was 36 years old, right? And I felt 86. Um, I was miserable. And I thought, I got to do something. My parents won't quit, won't quit nagging me about these shakes. Maybe I should do the shakes, right? So, uh, so I grabbed a hold of the nine day, the core of our 11 day ER shred. Yeah. Um, and I did it to the T and I released 21, 21 pounds of fat in nine days. Wow. And uh, at the time you didn't, we didn't do, two shake days, two cleanse days. There was no right. warm up. It was like, right. bam, in the fire. Yeah. And so yeah. two, two cleanse days, I, I thought I was going to die. I had, I had a, a rash break out on my chest from as toxins were leaving my body. I immediately had an excuse. I said, I'm, I'm allergic. I'm done. I'm out of here. This isn't right for me. This stuff is making me sick. Look at this rash on my chest. Yeah. And, uh, and something said, uh, you got to keep, you got to keep doing it. At least it's only nine days. Just push through. Okay. Yep. Sorry. I, no, that's what, okay. This is a big thing that I, that I hope that I hope somebody can learn from. You were so used to always making an excuse. Yeah. And you almost did it again. I almost did what, it again. Yeah. What, like, were you just at the lowest of low where was, like, it was like, I literally thought enough. I was going to die. Yep. I thought a rash is just a rash. If I don't do this, I'm going to die. Okay. Like my, my daughter was uh, three years old, I think at the time. And, um, 
and I imagined her growing up and getting involved in dance and um, sports or, mm. you know, whatever, and being the fat dad out of breath, just climbing the grandstands. And if I made it that long, right, if I made it to uh, 16, you know, she's three years old, I, I'm thinking, I don't know if I'll live another 13 years. Yeah. Um, I've got to make a change. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, so it was life or death. I really, I really felt like it was life or death. Yeah. And so, so nine days, I released 21 pounds a month, 35 pounds. Uh, like it was dropping pretty fast. Now, um, did you feel at, as you started seeing all this, you, you finally yeah. started having this positive something in your life? Yeah, I mean, up yeah. until this point, it's been like a negative shit show, right? Like, yeah, yeah, boom, 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 boom. Like, it's just like it's coming from everywhere, right? Yeah. And then right. now you have this like, did that shift something in you? Did you feel something like because because you had the courage to basically tell yourself to shut the f up? Yeah, that's what yeah. you got to do sometimes, right? You yeah. got you to draw yeah. the line and say no. Yeah. I'm yeah, in control, right? And then boom. Yeah. Does that create the shift inside? It it didn't right away. Uh, right away, right away. You know, there was there was a lot of shit for a lot of years to get okay. to get through, right? And so, yeah. even after thirty five pounds, um, and then I went on to I released ninety two pounds in six months. <laughs> at eight at eight months at eight months one hundred and two pounds total. I walked the stage holding my big fat pants with the 102 pounds on it, joined the, the ranks of the hundred pound club. And, um, it was euphoric at that point, you know, I was introduced to, to this incredible culture, right. The, mm -hmm. um, that celebration brings the, this big event, annual event. And, um, and it was, it was intoxicating and yeah. I, it was almost, uh, it was almost too much because I, I I was at celebration walking the stage with with my before picture up on the jumbotron and everybody's cheering me on and taking pictures and high fiving me and everywhere I went it was like I was this like I was a celebrity right I was put up on this pedestal um, and I and it felt amazing it felt really good the first time in my life I felt like that mm. um, but but I was partying that week. I was mm -hmm. drinking, right? I, I would go back and uh, I'd drink my shakes and I'd have like this uh, moon pie rice cake thing with hummus on it, right? But at evening time, boom, hitting vodka, partying mm -hmm. it up, dancing, you know, the, the gala and all the, um, all the stuff. I was still, I, I still didn't get it. I, it still mm -hmm. wasn't. I, I had crossed this magical finish line that, that really didn't exist in my mind, in my mind. And uh, and I had arrived and I could just go back to doing what, uh, what I'd always done right here. I, here I was fat guy come skinny. Um, I lost a hundred pounds. Um, I probably had another 10, 15 to lose, but I felt better, better at that point than I had ever. Um, and physically, so I felt it, physically, so, yeah, physically, right? physically, physically, right. Not mentally, right. Okay. Not, yeah. not mentally. The mindset thing didn't happen, um, yet for mm. me. And, um, anyway, I, so I, I kept the weight off. I did another event the following year, walked the stage again. I met some really cool people, um, uh, from Australia that, that were doing some awesome things, um, over there. And so I packed up my whole family. We sold everything. Uh, we had five boxes and two suitcases and, my wife and myself and my daughter went halfway around the, the world. We'd never left the United States before. And we were on this new adventure to go to Western Australia, uh, somewhere near Perth, a little town called Geraldton. And, uh, and to explore this idea that, that maybe we could share this, what, what I had found with the world. And I still wasn't, you know, I was kind of pouring in, coaching and mentorship. I was doing everything that I could to try to get my mind right, but I still, um, I still wasn't fully there yet. Right. Yeah. But we stepped out in faith and we went 
halfway around the world, not knowing what to expect. Thought we were going to be there a year, maybe go to Singapore, who knows, right? And uh, we were there 90 days. The ETA ran out. I couldn't get a work visa to stick around any longer. Um, and we had to come home, like with nothing. And we didn't know why. Like it cost me 13 grand to go hang out in a friend's pool house, poolside, beachside. The cool thing was, he had a lot of shakes too. He had bought a whole bunch of shakes and his, in his pool house was this big stockpile of shakes. Yeah. So by accident, we're over there trying to save money. And he says, eat as much of these as you can. I, I, I ordered too much, right? I can't eat it. He was just a really generous guy anyway. Yeah. And so, so we're eating, we're, we're hitting the snap fitness uh, twice a day. Cause what else are you going to do? Right. Yeah. So we're, we're at the beach, we're diving, diving for lobster. We're hanging out poolside in the jacuzzi and we're eating shakes and meat and veg grass fed Australian beef and a, and a little bit of capsicum, they call it, or as we know it, bell peppers, yeah. right? Yeah. So every day was barbecue, meat and veg, meat and veg, meat and veg, totally simple diet. They like butter too. And shakes. Um, but I didn't, it didn't click. It didn't yeah. click. We both lost uh, in the 90 days we were there. We didn't have a whole lot of weight to lose my wife and I, but we both lost 20 pounds. Um, uh, you mentioned in my bio that, uh, we had to do IVF to get my daughter here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, that was my, my wife, uh, had scarring issues. It wasn't, mm -hmm. wasn't, uh, me in that case, but, um, anyway, we, so we spent $35,000 to get, uh, a team of doctors at OHSU to give us a daughter. Well, we came home from Australia two weeks after we got home. My wife has a dream about a baby. She wakes up, she doesn't sleep in the middle of the day, but she was tired. She wakes up and decides to go to the bathroom and, uh, and take out a like seven year old uh, pregnancy test and bam, boy, having a boy. So the doctor said it could never happen, right? We could never have children naturally. It, wasn't impo it was an impossibility for my wife to get pregnant naturally. Therefore, if we were gonna do it again, it had to be IVF. Uh, but we spent three months in Australia eating shakes and steaks. We come home two weeks later, and then we realized that's that's why we went. That's why we stepped out, you know, in faith, and we were and we were uh, we were blessed with a with a boy. So I got a gender reveal for my 40th birthday. That's crazy. <laughs> Congratulations! You have 18 more years to go. But yeah, but it, it was awesome. It's awesome, right? It's miracle <laughs> miracle number two. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, so, uh, so my notes say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So my wife is pregnant. My wife is pregnant and she's putting on baby weight. So I have to as well, right? The excuses start coming back. I gotta, uh, I gotta, uh, uh, I gotta help support her in eating weird foods, bad habits, Right. The next thing you know, I'm on this downward, downward spiral and my old habits or addictions around food and, uh, and things come back. Um, and, and I, and I start putting the weight back on mm. and slowly, slowly. Um, but eventually after, after a couple of years, the, the weight comes back on and, um, how much weight, and how I got much back weight up, are you talking so I got back up to 240 pounds. I was down to 165. Wow. So yeah, over, over the next, over the next few years, I would put, um, or a couple of years, I guess, few years, whatever I would put back on, uh, more than half of what I lost. Mm. And, uh, and so I decided I should start drinking shakes again. Right. Yeah. Okay. Hold, so, on, hold so on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I gotta, I gotta yep. make sure, I gotta make sure that I follow this because this is like, yeah, we went around the world at Carmen San Diego and came back again. So hold, hold on one second. <laughs> so, we, okay. so we went to Australia, we picked up and moved. Yeah. Now in this time, yeah. you are, you're, you're an entrepreneur. You've been an entrepreneur pretty much, yeah, your whole life. So you're running your company at this point in time now. You're, you're, you're in the, in the tech space, right? 
I'm living on savings. I, I was going to. I was going to pick up a job from a friend doing uh, doing commercial phone systems, and, and um, he was in the communication business, a similar business to what I had. Okay. Um, but we went, but we went there to uh, to learn how to share shakes. That's what. Right. We did. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you were. Yeah. So you. Okay. So you were going for yeah. a different dream. Yeah. Right. That didn't work. You end right. up having. You have all this. This stuff happen. Where you have these. Yeah. The, the children come. Right. The IVF works. Yeah. Then you get naturally pregnant. And, but so, so throughout this entire time. You physically yeah. hit a goal, yeah, but you never mentally put the pieces together of how and why no. we were able to do the goal. It was just kind of like right as susan as Susan put it, my monkey mind was really loud, right mm. um, and uh and i um uh, you know I went to amplified life and i i did i did a lot of stuff a lot of work on uh on myself trying trying to get my mind right and okay. i was i was battling with uh with that that voice in your head only mine was excruciatingly loud and um i, I found out later that that had something to do with this <clears throat> pituitary adenoma right um, and yeah because because what I've learned, what I know now is that that I have two brains and a little voice. One one is in my gut and the other is in my head. And as these as my gut is producing more uh dopamine and serotonin than my brain does, uh and I'm feeding I'm feeding the wrong uh feeding the wrong wolf, right? I'm feeding that mm. uh, that other brain the wrong stuff. It's telling my it's telling this brain all the giving it all the wrong messages, and then that little voice is saying, "See, see, you can't do it. You're you're still that little fat kid, right? You you're you're fat because your mom's fat and your grandma's fat and her her mom was probably fat too, mm. and and uh, and it was and it was constant and and I never I never could figure out how to get it uh, get it under control, right? Get that that mental block." Uh, to, to go away. I, I tried, I read books, man, I, I poured over thousands of hours of audio books and been to, uh, I've spent way too much money going to seminars and um, all kinds of stuff. And really um, I still hadn't been putting the right things in my gut. Thank mm -hmm. you. You are shred. That's not the case today, but, um, but I hadn't, there was a piece still missing somewhere, yeah. right? I, I had done ketogenic. I did, I green juiced for a few months, lost a whole bunch of muscle mass. It, it tasted like licking the bottom of a lawnmower. I'm, you know, filling these mason jars with this green sludge and uh, it was putrid. But I thought at the time I have to do this. And, uh, and it was, it was not fixing this. None of that was fixing this. Um, and uh, anyhow, so, so what's the connection to you? So you, so you, yep. your wife gets pregnant, you go into, you were starting, you were sharing the story about how you, because of that, you had all this success so far, but then yeah. things happen in life and you come yep. back and your wife's pregnant. So I, and then you, yeah. So, so we came right? back from Australia. I didn't have anything, right? It was all, it was all gone. I burnt through a bunch of savings and, and okay. we, and we, we burnt the bridges. We sold everything, went over there. Okay. And so I came home and, and uh, I'm homeless, jobless, uh, family of three. And, um, and does that so, bring back, like, does that bring back now? I, I want to, where's this connection? Like what, what triggers in the brain is this, does that situation in life now bring back what you were just sharing? I'm worthless. Yeah. I'm not yeah. like, like, what the, what am yeah. I doing? Oh yeah, I'm absolutely. Failure. Right. Like, right. Totally All second it, guessing, though, right? right? Totally second guessing my my decision to do what I had done, and where did it put us? You know, it set us back. Um, this is all on my shoulders as mm -hmm. head of household. I'm the breadwinner, um, and here I took us on this big long vacation that just didn't didn't really uh, get us anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and so I um, 
so it was easy to fall back on what I, what I knew. And one thing I knew was a traditional business. So I went back to work doing a traditional business that, that, uh, uh, that could make me money fast that, that I knew could make me money that, yeah. but, but that was, that was the positive, uh, that I fell back into, but the negative that I fell back into was eating fast food on the run because that job was, uh, I'd, I'd see six people in a day, home to home to home. I didn't have time to, to eat right or even understand it anymore. Like mm-hmm. as if shakes, as if shaking a shaker is right. difficult. Right. Right. But, but it, it was back to Red Bull energy drinks to get through the day and stopping at McDonald's or Taco Bell. Cause I'm in a hurry. Yeah. I'm in a hurry. And it was right. just like a shift, right? Like it just like, yeah. you just, it was still yeah, so just the, the pieces stupid. never got great. worked on. So they were still right. there. And right. when the time presented, it was just like a whoosh. It was like nothing, right? It was just like bang, right back to it. Absolutely, that's exactly yeah. it. Yeah, I've done it was this so ingrained. So many times in life, it makes you want to vomit. Yep, yep, for real. And and so uh, so that's what I did. I I went back into what I knew, and um, and uh, a couple of years ago, um, I had another health crisis. And, uh, this time, uh, I went to the doctor and the doctor said, you just need to lose weight and you'll feel better. Well, no kidding, Einstein, but what can you do to help with, uh, with my, my back pains and my, you know, uh, my body hurts. How, how are you going to help me? Like I decided for the first time in my life to rely on a doctor and he, and he, um, uh, he did not. He did not fix my problem. He just said, "Go lose weight, fat guy," and worsened it. Right? He just he just dumped the fat word at me again. And um, anyway, so so I I uh, well let's let me back up for a second because I did do I did do a little short stint on keto. I decided to do shakes again after I gained back all that weight after we're back from Australia. I decided, hey, I'm going to do these shakes again. I know it worked before. Mm. And I started talking to a buddy that I wanted to, to uh, I, I needed a, uh, I needed a, uh, a partner, like a, a accountability partner. Yeah, accountability. There you go. That's the word I'm looking for. I needed an accountability partner. And so I said, this guy that worked for me, I said, hey, why don't you do this with me? And he said, no, me and my girlfriend are doing this ketogenic diet and I got to, I got to do that with her. So I decided I'm going to do keto and prove this guy wrong, show him how it doesn't work. Right. And, uh, I lost a bunch of weight. Yeah. Like time frame and weight doesn't matter, but I lost a bunch of weight doing keto. I still didn't feel any better, uh, at the end of it. And I picked up some new craving food, food cravings when I stopped doing it because it's not very sustainable. And, uh, and I went back the other way, plus a few, right. I gained, I gained even more weight than I took off in less time than I took it off. Uh, I so rebounded. It's still, this, it's still yeah. your entire life is like been like this constant yo-yo. Like it's back, yeah. up, yeah. down, up, down, yep. up, down, up, down, right? Like I think yep. a lot of people can relate to that for sure. Yep. Right? It's like the roller coaster. Yeah, right. Exactly. And so, so, uh, so the doctor couldn't fix me two years ago. I got to the point where uh, I, I didn't want to go to the doctor at all, no matter how bad I felt. Um, but yeah. but I had let my I had let myself get to a point where uh, I lost all of my body hair. I had zero testosterone, no human growth hormone. I had ED at 46 years old, and I used to be the guy that you know pants rub you the wrong way, and you got to think about ghosts <laughs> and grandma to get. You know what I mean? I was, I, I was borderline pervert. Right. And so, so that was not happening. I'm like, no, when I'm a hundred, that won't be an issue. Right. That's not me. So anyway, um, but I digress. So, so I, I, uh, I would, I got to the point where getting up out of a chair, I would put my hands on my knees and I'd really have to muster the courage to, to stand. That's how bad it got. This was just last year in September yeah. and October. I would put my hands on my knees. 
I'd start to stand up and then I would walk my hands up my thighs to push myself up straight because everything hurt and my, my muscles had atrophied because of no testosterone, no human growth hormone. Yeah. And uh, so I saw, I saw my kid's doctor because uh, nobody else would see me. We had, we're in COVID. Nobody else would see me. And uh, my wife called my, my kid's pediatrician and said, uh, my husband's got some serious health issues going on. He needs to see somebody and nobody will see him. She said, send him in. She spent an hour and a half with me. She wrote down, took notes for an hour and a half. Uh, and she sent me for blood work. Uh, she called me up and said, I'm going to do blood work again to verify, but I think you might have a legion on your pituitary gland. And I said, what? A what on my who? And, and uh, you know, pituitary glands the size of a, of a pea dangles mm -hmm. in your brain, produces a lot of important hormones. And uh, anyway, I got the MRI. Sure enough, I had a, a cyst, Rothke's cleft cyst, the size of a, a Costco grape hanging on the side of this pea. And, uh, and it, was, it was messing me up. And so, so I, got, I was referred to OHSU, the same place that we went for IVF to get my daughter here. They're miracle workers, so I trusted them. So I went up there. They pulled that thing out through my nose. Uh, and there I am in the hospital recovering from brain surgery in November. November 9th, I went in for surgery. Um, they, uh, I felt better after like the third or fourth day, and they said it was going to be four to six weeks before I could lift anything over 10 pounds, six to eight months, six to eight months before I started feeling good again. Right. And, and, uh, so we're on our way from the hospital on our way home and I'm scrolling Facebook in the passenger seat while my wife drives, uh, cause you know, brain surgery. <laughs> and, uh, and I, and I see a post from Sean Escobar about ER shred. And I was wondering where that cat was. I thought it was outside my truck. Yeah, you know. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so, so, so I see this post on ER Shred and I was trying to decide on the way home. I thought, okay, I got to get, I got to get the rest of my health. I got to lose weight. I got to get things, uh, you know, now that I got this thing out of my head, now I've got to figure out the rest of it. Yeah. And I thought I could either go back to keto, which kind of, I lost weight pretty rapidly, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, I didn't feel as good as I did uh, drinking shakes. Right. And so, so I see this post from Sean about ER shred and I go look at it and I went, what, wait a second. This is the best of the, the best of my ketogenic diet wrapped up in a, uh, in my shake weight loss. Yeah. Right. In, in that system. And so, yeah. so it, but, but see back then when I was doing keto, I thought I've got to stay in clinical ketosis all the time. I've got, if I, if I get knocked out of ketosis, I'm going to stop burning fat and, uh, and, and that wouldn't be a good thing. And there's carbohydrates in our shakes. Right. And, and I, I didn't, I didn't think that, well, if I eat a shake, it's going to knock me out of ketosis and then, uh, and then I'll just be back and forth and it won't do me any good. So I never even tried it. Never even mm. gave it a shot. Mm. Um, I was trying to figure out what products I could use along with keto, or should I just go back to doing what I knew, um, drinking shakes, right? And mm. skip the keto. So I see his post and I went, man, that's got to work. That just sounds right, right? That sounds so good. So I did, right? Up, I got home on the 14th of November. Uh, the very next morning, it was shakes and steaks. Yeah. Every day. I, I wasn't going to do a cleanse because that hole in my head was healing up. And I thought I need good <laughs> protein to plug that hole. Right. I, yeah. I need to get get the protein in. So I did shakes and steaks all the way uh, through Christmas. The only day I didn't was Thanksgiving dinner. Mm -hmm. um, and I killed that plate of Thanksgiving dinner. Didn't gain it out. Right. Just devoured it. Everybody else was looking at me like you're done. Yep. <laughs> That's what this machine does. So anyway, so I did. So uh, so Christmas, the day after Christmas, the 26th and 27th, I did two cleanse days, the ER shred way. Yeah. What a breeze. 
Like who'd have thought add bone broth, right? Right. So I slayed those, felt amazing. Uh, By January 4th, I was ready to rock and roll with everybody on on ER Shred. And uh, at the end of the first shred uh, that we did January 4th, I was down 45 pounds and I had gone from a 42 inch waist to a 36, right? Six inches off my waist in that amount of time. Um, I don't measure all my body parts because, uh, quite frankly, I don't want to wrap a tape around my man boobs. When they're gone, I'll measure it. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so I, I, um, yeah, I've had huge success, but more than the rapid weight loss. Yeah. So this, is, this is what I'm excited about. What's the difference? The, Tell me the difference. The mind. Oh my God. The mindset, right? The, the, the fog lifted quick, mm. the, the good healthy fats that I wasn't getting doing, you know, doing shakes and chicken, chicken breast, steamed chicken breast and broccoli, right? 4,600 calorie meal. Um, <laughs> I, my weenus is soft though, bro. <laughs> This is the PG oh, me. podcast. Oh my god! Thank you, Adam. You're killing me. So, uh, oh geez, yeah. So, I I did come alive. I I just that that voice that voice is non-existent anymore, right? Oh, I man. it doesn't it, when I hear it talk. I see that that thought come into my head. And I just smack that sucker on the way through and laugh at it, right? It doesn't linger anymore. I don't hear that voice echoing in my head anymore. Um, I'm, I'm thinking clearly. And, uh, and I, I have energy like I've never had. Like yeah. I didn't have on keto. Like I definitely didn't have green juicing or being vegan vegetarian, which I, uh, I hate to admit I did that too years ago. But, but I didn't – I this is the only thing that I've ever experienced uh, the weight loss as fast as drinking shakes by itself. And then had the mental clarity that, that keto brought me uh, without the cravings, right? I lost those too. So, so when I walk through the grocery store now, you know, it crackers and cookies and chips and, whatever. I walk down the aisle and I'm like, what a lovely aisle of death. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like it just, I, I, I don't, I can't even look at this stuff anymore. Right. Yeah. I'd, I'd hit the chip aisle and it'd be like, grab three different brands, Doritos, Cheetos, potato chips. Um, and, and then wash it down with a rockstar Red Bull, uh, Pepsi, you know, Dr. Pepper, whatever. Why, why and and I, I don't, Yep. Why do you think like what what's the shift all of a sudden like why do you look at that stuff now as Isle of Death where before it was was food like what's that because because so the nerdy the nerdy thing it is my microbiome is shifted right mm-hmm. the little the little army in my gut is telling my brain eat fat right so now I walk down the aisle I'm like where's the zero sugar zero sugar jerky. Give me some fatty looking pepperoni, right? Yeah. Where, where do I, how do I avoid all of these, uh, these mines? Because, uh, because I don't even see them anymore. I yeah. see, I see, where's the grass fed beef? Um, uh, well, that, that salmon looks really good, but I'm going to have to douse it with butter because that's what I'm feeding on, right? Mm-hmm. That's what, that's what that army in my gut is, is feeding on. That's what gives mm-hmm. me mental clarity. That's, that's how I'm, that's how I'm able to get through the day the way that I do now. Um, and so the thought of eating that other stuff takes me back to a really bad place, right? Mm. The thought, the thought of chowing down on, on a bag of Doritos, I would be absolutely miserable, Mm. absolutely miserable. It does not serve me at all. It didn't before, but I didn't know it because I was so jacked up, right? My body was so messed up that, that, um, that I, I was trading that, that dopamine hit. I was the addict and feeding that little uh, impulse that, that got me to a happy place for a, a really short time. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I live there constantly, 
mm. right? I don't need that anymore. I'm mm. constantly living on that high. Like, I don't even know what time it is right now, but, uh, but I have my bulletproof coffee, a shake and a ribeye today. And I could jump out of this truck and run through the snow for seven miles. I know I could. And I'm in boots. <laughs> <laughs> so you have, you have no, I, I know, you know, because you hear me preach this all the time, but this, this, as Sean says last night, like this makes my heart sing because yeah. For years, you know what I mean? Like when I when I had that feeling that you're describing right now and I yeah. finally got it, like it finally clicked in my brain of how powerful it was. And you just you create a different relationship with food. You know what I mean? Like food yeah. to me literally is is my fuel. And it's the only it's the relationship like I food does nothing else to me besides provide fuel for my body, for recovery, for energy, for everything else that I want to kick ass and take names in freaking life. You know what I mean? Yeah. And bro, yeah. you're you're the, from what the story you shared to where you're at today. I mean, holy shit, like your confidence is coming through. You know what I mean? Like, sir, I know you have Milo lights everywhere, but you can just tell, <laughs> dude. Like, yeah, whoa, like, just like, it's a natural high when your body and, and your body's designed to feel like this, yeah. Jason. Like, yeah. everybody's body, the human body is designed to feel like you're describing. And the ER shred is just the, it's the tracks to run on. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you just needed the right tracks. And your, your train got picked up and put on the tracks and you just went with it, bro. And you're, you're grasping what makes me so happy is you're understanding the concept mm. that you are in charge. Yeah. You are in charge. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're reaping yeah. the rewards of that, right? We always say like, don't focus on the weight loss. You always focused on the weight loss before because everybody told you. They yeah, told you yeah. you were fat. The doctor told you yeah. to lose weight, lose weight, lose weight. And you had all these kicks in the nuts from life and everything else that happened. And it was just all this stuff. But it's like if we focus on the health side first and you got, you know, you figure this out. Thank God for that doctor, right, to figure that out and take that yeah, time. Dude. But Thank now you're God. putting that connection together. And you're doing yep. it because you want to be there for a bigger purpose, which is your kids and the grandkids. And you start to factor all that in. And, bro, you're yeah. like, this is where it comes together, like that mind and body connection of you finally putting those pieces together and how they all connect. Yeah, that's yeah. the empowerment aspect that we talk about with the ER shred. That's the depth that nobody understands. Like it's so much more than the stupid weight and the inches, right? Yeah, right, right. I yeah, mean, what has this done more. for your life? Like, how do you walk? How do you wake up every day? How do you walk through life now? It, it's incredible. Like every every thought process is different, right? My my relationship with my wife is better than than I can ever remember it being. Like literally ever. Um, my Thanks, Sean. Um, uh, the way I show up for my kids, you know, which is everything. Like, we just sold our we sold our house uh, not too long ago. We're looking for property to build, but uh, uh, we we're we're living in a living in a van down by the river. No, I'm kidding. We're living in a 36 foot uh, Holiday Rambler diesel pusher class a motor home right now yeah which is why i'm in my truck because the kids are loud in there that's awesome <laughs> right and and uh so uh, so i got to come out to the parking lot but yeah. but um but you know when you're confined to that little space with them um and uh i just i would i would have been i would have been really irritable and yelling at everybody that's how i was right before uh, before my surgery, before before ER shred, before mm. figuring it out, uh, I was I was a real jerk for a long time, and uh, uh, and you know drinking all the time, and I, yeah. it, I just it really sucked. Life life got really bad, and mm. now um, now it's the best it's ever been. Like yeah. it's it's awesome. Uh, it, yeah, it's it's truly a blessing. Life is truly a blessing. I I shoot out of bed in the morning with tons of energy, uh, just excited to face the day, yeah. uh, where, where before I just wanted to stay in bed. 
Um, and, and, uh, yeah, it's incredible. And my, and my wife, my wife, my wife has released 21 pounds or 20, 20 pounds. And I don't know how many inches and, uh, she's doing it right along with me and, and, uh, and feels incredible and, and, uh, is behind, um, behind me like she's never been before right because she sees the change in me so um yeah what about the kids how how do the kids react do they are they excited for mom and dad because i know i know kids pick up on everything oh yeah they they pick up on all of it yeah they're um they're awesome my my kids are just um they're you know they they fight all the time small spaces you know with each other but um but that's to be expected, a six-year-old, Adam, a 13-year-old. Adam, I, I, thought, I think I saw Adam post something. He wants to do what you're doing with, with four. So, With four? With four kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. RV, Good, do it. it. You, guys, you guys will have to have a chat. Yeah, do it. No, there's, we're, we're in a Facebook group with uh, full-time families. Um, and, yeah, there's a lot of people. That's fifth awesome. wheel. Buy a fifth wheel with bunk beds. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. So, so for you, Jay, you know, obviously yep. life has changed. You're crushing it. You've lost 45 pounds now, six inches off your waist. Your wife is thriving. Yeah. You're doing it as a team. Yeah. You're doing it together, right? Yeah. The kids are picking up on We're it. Doing I mean, a lot. We're doing a lot have together. No idea. Yeah. You have no idea how much this impacts all of life, right? Yeah, relationship, yeah. career, spirituality, you show up different, you wake up different, you go to work different, you run your company yeah. different. Like it's just you go to different. Bed different. You yeah, right? Like yeah, your health yeah. is your greatest wealth. This is like yeah. you are the example of what I'm trying to preach to everybody that your health is your greatest wealth, right? Like yeah. look at you shine, bro. Like look at you shine. Listen, let's do this. People are out there, maybe they're on the fence. Hopefully they've, re- you know, if somebody can relate to a piece of your story, can take something from you. What's the message that you would say to people about health? Somebody who's struggling right now that maybe is fighting the demons like you were fighting. What's a yeah. message that you that you would like to share from them? Is there anything that comes to to mind to heart that you that you would want to say? Yeah, just go all in. Mm. Just go all in. Just just trust the process because uh, it works, man. Find, uh, find somebody to be an accountability partner um, and, and just jump in both feet and do this thing. Like <laughs> plug into the community. The culture is everything, but you know, yeah, tell people you, about that too. What, what is our ER strength yeah. community like? Oh, it's, it's awesome. Like that feeling that I felt when I walked, walked the stage, and everybody cheered me on um, at, at this, the big event, you know, the, the big annual event. ER Shred is like a little piece of that big event every day, right? Yeah. The, the people in this culture, in this community will just pour into you constantly um, and lift you up and make you feel uh, like you can accomplish anything, really. And so in it's always good to have an accountability partner like a spouse or someone to do it with you when, when you're turned off, right. When you shut Mm -hmm. off your phone and, and you do real life. Um, But the rest of the time you got the ER shred family, right. Uh, Shredder nation, as you put it. And, and uh, man, it's awesome. You guys are just awesome. You and Sean and Crystal and, uh, and Bob and Susan and, Heather earlier. I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to follow that, that video, but yeah. uh, man, she's a rock star. But, wow. and most of the time when she talks it, uh, I, I stop typing. Like she'll type something, somebody will ask a question and I'll go to type and Heather's got something popped up there and I'm like, wow, <laughs> straight, straight out of my brain to her text. But anyway, no, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's second to none, second yeah. to none. And, Dude, and it's you a, should it's be, special. you should be paying you should be paying a, a small fortune for what this community brings for free. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah. gold. Diamonds. Yeah. Oh, man, Jason, I could talk to you forever, bro. I can't wait till the day that we can all finally travel and we can get together. You know, yeah, yeah. now I got to give you a big yep. virtual, big virtual man hug. You yeah, know, yeah, but um, I'll tell you, I, I appreciate you. 
You know, I, I really do because you like you understanding and grasping. I always say, if I can just help one person, like if one person gets it, everything that I do is so worth it. All the, all the, whatever, you know what I mean? Because if I can just keep paying it forward one person at a time, you know, somebody believed in me, you know, I can believe in somebody else, you know, and I all, I owe all that to Sean. Yeah. I owe all that to Sean because that man, like he's never stopped believing in me for six years. And, you know, I wanted to go back on myself so many times, you know what I mean? So I understand. And if we can just keep doing that, bro, the 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 impact that we can have you know everybody's life will be better other people's lives like it's just it's something that's so special that that we have here and and i know speaking from sean and crystal and myself like we are so grateful to have somebody like you part of part of our family i look at i mean you're you're a brother now you know what i mean like this is this is the relationships that we're building in this community Like you got, we got friends for life, friends for life. Like that's a good feeling, especially coming from where we came from as kids, where we didn't even know if life was worth it. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even know if life was worth it. Yep. Fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do. And now we have this. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I hope. I hope that I can touch um, lots of yeah. lives. Like that's that's my uh, that is my goal for sure is to to um, to give the gift that I've been given. Mm. Yeah. Oh man, I can't thank you enough for being raw and real and vulnerable. This was this was fun, bro. We got we got we're definitely going to connect some more and chat some more. I feel like we got a lot yeah, more yeah. stories to hear, and yeah. we're not going anywhere, right? We're not no. going anywhere. No more backwards. No. There's no nope. more backwards. Like those boats are burned. Those bridges are, are burned. burned. Like you have this community. You have people. Like I mean, I, we'll go back and look at like the comments are still blowing up for you, like. Go feel that love. Like yeah, go, yeah. everybody just keep, put in there how much you love Jason. Because man, I'll tell you, you, you go, go, Jason. Like it will, it will move you. I'm telling you, if you can see all them. Um, I just want to thank you. Everybody, thanks you. I appreciate your time. Um, we're gonna wrap it, you know, here okay. to leave it there because man, I that's it's a lot. It's gonna take me. It's gonna take me a good 45 minutes to come down from this one because I got a whole right. lot of emotion yeah. going through. Um, but I appreciate you, bro. And, and I, I'm cheering for you. You know, I'm your biggest cheerleader. You know, you, yeah. your wife, family, like I just want nothing but the absolute best in all aspects of life for you. And I, I'm really proud of you. And I can't wait to keep celebrating you and your goals and, and keep watching you just crush life, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate yeah. it. All yeah, right, guys. I'm, all right. I will. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to, to uh, show you my abs at in uh salt lake city or the next one absolutely all right so next time we meet up then we'll 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 have that we'll have the ab challenge right all right maybe we'll invite sean i don't know we'll see if we invite sean or not um all right guys listen we appreciate you we know we went a little bit over tonight um you know but jason i'll tell you you know sharing a good story and and you know, you, you just, there's no time limit on that. Right. So we hope you found value tag some friends. If somebody needs some inspiration, have the courage to reach out. Um, for those of you that want to know more about the ER shred, go to www.ershred.com. Join our free community. We welcome everybody. You do not have to use the nutrition that we use. Come and join us. Come and get uplifted. Come and get the motivation. ERShredders.com. And, and you can experience that. Jason, have an awesome night. And guys, we'll talk to you soon. You too. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye, guys. All right. Bye.